Hello, sewing people of the internet. This video is one of a series that I'm making evaluating the Singer heavy duty machines to try to determine just how heavy duty they really are. If you're new to this series, I recommend you go back to my unboxing and first impressions video. In short, I have concerns that this machine is just a typical household sewing machine and isn't really the heavy duty machine that people think they're buying and it might lead to a lot of disappointment. So I'm gonna be trying several projects on this machine to evaluate its performance. And I'm also gonna compare it to some other machines, uh, especially my vintage domestic machines. In today's video, I'm gonna compare the Singer HD to the Singer 503A. I got this machine for free. It was sitting on the side of the road being thrown away. It's an excellent example of the kind of vintage sewing machine that I tend to prefer. In order to briefly compare these two machines, I'm gonna make a couple of little zip pouches out of some X-Pac VX21 fabric that I have. This is a custom print that I had done by Ripstop by the Roll, in case you're wondering about this pattern. VX21 is a very durable fabric that's often used in backpacking, backpack construction. It's certainly not the heaviest material I could sew, but it's a good test for a household machine and it's something you can make usable and practical items out of. Before starting the project with these machines, I decided to do a speed test. The Singer HD claims a sewing speed of 1100 stitches per minute, and it claims that that's a, a very high sewing speed for quickly finishing projects. Uh, I did a pretty rudimentary speed test. There's certainly a lot of room for human error in this. Uh, it's definitely not a, a real scientific test, but uh, basically I sewed with each machine for 10 seconds and then counted the number of stitches, multiplied that by six to come up with how many stitches per minute each machine was producing. Uh, and obviously I'm not a machine and stuff, so you know there's certainly a little bit of variability. But the results I got were the Singer 503 vintage machine produced about 1,014 stitches per minute, and the Singer HD produced about 1,038 stitches per minute. Now, that 1,038 stitches is certainly within the error bars for a claimed 1,100 stitches per minute. That seems like that's a pretty reasonable speed for that machine. Uh, however, it's not that incredible <laughs> when you realize that a 1960s machine that was put out to be thrown away uh, gives the same exact performance, basically. <clears throat> this isn't necessarily a criticism of the Singer HD. 1,100 stitches per minute, or 1,038 stitches per minute, is a completely fine, usable speed. It's just maybe not that impressive, and uh, it seems like their marketing tries to make it seem like it's a pretty big deal, and maybe it's not. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about sewing this pouch. Uh, I've got a video on sewing pouches like this if you want to check it out. I'm just going to sew one with this machine, and then I'm going to sew one with the Singer HD, and then if I, if I don't run into any problems with either one, I'll just discuss my impressions of how each one performed afterwards. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting started with uh, the 503. I'm sewing 400 denier pack cloth to a number 8 YKK zipper with V69 thread. I have no idea what needle is in this machine right now. That's the problem. Tension's way, 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 way off. So let's let's try this again. Okay, that is a real potential disadvantage to using vintage sewing machines. I had to fiddle around with the tensioner a little bit. Uh, when I bought this machine, the tension wasn't getting quite tight enough. I put a new beehive spring in it. Still isn't perfect, but. Uh, It'll do for now, so I'm going to keep going. Okay, 
I'm just hand, hand wheeling over the zipper, mostly as a precaution. All right, now I'm gonna just jump over to the HD. I'm gonna do one step on this machine and do the same step on the HD machine. First, I'm gonna uh, wind a bobbin with some V69 thread. I haven't used V69 in this machine yet. It should not be a problem for it, but. Okay, well. That didn't go very well. That may not be the fault of the machine. It's not necessarily intended to be used with a thread cone like this, although I would argue that it should be able. I've had to finagle ways to make it work with other machines, so I'm not gonna knock the machine for not working perfectly with something it wasn't necessarily intended to do, but we do need to make it work. So. It's not kicking off when it's full, but again, not that big of a deal. Uh, I guess let's try a test piece before we get started. So, also, not great tension. Uh, that's interesting, so crank the tension up on that. I'm honestly a little surprised by that. This 400D pack cloth is very dense. But I've sewn it with a lot of machines. Alright, that's better. So with the tension cranked all the way, it's barely good enough tension. So if I were making an entire project out of this 400D, I might reconsider. Uh, but this is just for the zipper uh, tabs, so we will proceed. But that is interesting that both machines are struggling to get sufficient tension. And by the way, I haven't messed with the lower, or the bobbin tension. I could perhaps reduce the bobbin tension enough to get the tension perfect. Again, if I were making an entire project with this material, that would be something to look into, but for our purposes, this is fine. I will say that this machine seems to be feeding the zipper better. Uh, has a wider feed dog, wider spaced feed dogs. Uh, looks like there's more points of uh, engagement, perhaps. So it may feed a little bit better than the other machine did. So that's nice. So this is the first tab I sewed on on that machine, and the tension is fine. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And on this one, the tension got jacked up a little bit. I suspect that's because the upper thread got wrapped around the needle clamp screw. So I'm gonna take this off and do it again and make sure that that was the problem. Okay, other than the first few stitches, it seems to be fine. So we're going to roll with that. I would say between the two machines, it felt a little easier to sew this on this machine. And it fed it a little bit better, I think because of the increased number of contact points on the feed dogs, and this has a wider foot. This is just the standard foot that was on the machine when I took it out of the box. Uh, the other machine has a narrower foot that can be advantageous at some times, but there is possibly a narrower foot 
either that came with this machine or is available for it. So it's not a knock on this machine. It definitely seems like the feeding was a little bit better. All right, the next step, we're just gonna sew the zipper assembly to the body fabric. Again, I'm having some slight tension issues that are causing it to not want to feed. Oh. I'll put the thread stand back on too. If you were screaming at me that I didn't put zipper sliders on, you're right. This video isn't about doing this project, but I do need to put sliders on. Okay, I resolved that uh, oversight on my part. Now I'm going to top stitch. Oh, and I also cut this in half because, because I have zipper tabs on this. Uh, I can't split the zipper to attach to the other side. Again, I'm not trying to make a video about how to make this pouch, but uh, in case it's confusing. Uh, I just uh, had to change that. So, I ran a little bit too far back and uh, it's not feeding. There we go. It's not as precise as I might have been with my top stitching. A little wobbly there, but uh, that's really more my fault. I don't think that was anything that the machine did. And as you could see, it was not a struggle-free process to do that top stitching. If it seems I'm a little bit more forgiving of this machine, it was free. Okay, let's try it on the Singer Heavy Duty. Because this foot is so much wider, I'm gonna use the needle position control. I didn't do that on the other machine, although I could have, but this uh, foot is quite a bit wider, so just to be as fair as possible. Probably really need to put a zipper foot on. It's 
trying to push the piece out under the foot on the side. So it does have snap-on feet. I don't normally use these and they're pretty wonderful. Uh, but you know, vintage machines that I tend to use don't often have them. So are you going to snap on them? I was just talking about how wonderful you are. Again, this may be my own ignorance at work. I don't normally use these. I've, I've used a snap-on foot on my wife's brother machine once, and I was really amazed with how quickly and easily I could pop a new foot in. That does not seem to be, or I'm not doing it right. <laughs> I, I don't know which. How does this one go? Okay, so that one pops right in. Okay, that was, it was all me. So also, I don't really use zipper feet very often because the machines that I tend to use have thin enough feet that I don't really need it. So this is not a shortcoming of the machine necessarily. This is just me not being used to working with this kind of uh, accessory. If you haven't noticed, I keep reaching for the wrong spot for the reverse lever. I actually think I kind of like it here, but I, I'm just not used to it being here, so uh, just going to take some getting used to, I guess. I don't like how cheap and plasticky it feels, but it's a plastic machine, so... So this is the Singer HD and the Singer 503A. Uh, the main difference I can tell in appearance is there's some waviness here where I didn't stay very straight. I think that's more on me than on the machine. The stitches look pretty much the same. I got a couple of short stitches here where the machine had a hard time getting over this thicker part where the fold is on the zipper tab. Um, don't really see any of that here. Uh, in terms of the use, it was definitely easier on the Singer HD. It felt like it fed a little bit better, but the 503 was free and the heavy duty is $230. Uh, and okay, obviously not everybody's going to have a 503 for free, but I mean that's, you know, maybe a 50 maybe a $100 machine uh on the used marketplace. Uh, I wouldn't pay much more than that. All right, let's continue with the process. Well, um, my cameraman forgot to hit record on the camera. I, I'm the cameraman, by the way. Uh, so, this went well on this machine. I mean, pretty much as you've seen so far. So, nothing really exciting to report. Okay, so there's two identical pouches made with the same materials on two different sewing machines. What have we learned? 
I don't think anyone but the most scrutinizing observer would be able to tell any difference between these two. So in terms of the results, they're basically the same. Any, any variation between them is really on me more than on the machines. There's two questions that I'm trying to answer here about this machine. One is, is it really heavy duty? And two, is it worth the price? Is it a good value to pay $230 for this machine? There's different variants of this machine that have different prices. So, you know, say $200 to $300 or whatever, versus using a vintage domestic machine that could be purchased for very little money uh, or possibly even gotten for free. And there are some vintage domestic machines that have prices that rival something like this. So the result of today's experiment, I would say that machine was the more pleasant one to use and did a better job. Uh, it fed better, it had fewer, almost no trouble starting in kind of the thicker part where the zipper tabs were. It struggled a lot less. I think there was one time where it kind of stalled a little bit but nothing compared to this one. This one stalled quite a bit. The 503A was completely functional, and, you know, I think in 60 years, this machine won't exist, much less be usable the way this is 60 years after it was made. A long-standing premise of my channel has been that I recommend vintage domestic machines as your first sewing machine if you are someone with an interest in sewing more utilitarian items out of heavier fabrics like the things I like to make on this channel. So the question is, instead of buying a vintage machine, should you buy a machine like the Singer Heavy Duty? And I don't have an answer for that question yet, but today's experiment at least supports the idea that this could be a viable option. And if you can't find a vintage domestic that you like, or if you don't like tinkering with machines and you just want something new out of the box with whatever warranty comes with it, then I can say at least that for sewing this project, this machine worked better than this machine. Now, I have many other vintage domestic machines and it may be different with some of those other machines, but in this example, I'm mean, gonna have to give the win to the Singer Heavy Duty. Now, the other question that I haven't answered in this video is, would any other new Singer or other household sewing machine have performed just as good, better, or worse than this machine. And while I can't compare this to every single sewing machine on the market, I'm gonna to try to answer that question in a future video. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel and you might wanna ring the notification bell. I'll be producing more videos about this machine in the coming months, so if this is a topic that interests you, then you'll wanna stay tuned. If you like this video, clicking like is always a great thing to do. There's a bunch of links in the description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, check out my second YouTube channel, purchase some merchandise from my store, or make any purchases from any of the affiliate links down there. If you have questions or comments, post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.